Chandler en qué trabaja? Hot. Diez segundos, si no lo contestan, entonces... Monica and Rachel bet their apartment on a trivia game against Chandler and Joey. Will the girls keep their apartment or lose it all? Stick around to find out and uncover key vocabulary and phrases that will make you laugh while learning. Comencemos. Si ganamos nosotras, ellos se deshacen del gallo. Ay, qué interesante. Si ganan, regalamos el pollo. Ah. ah. Pero si ganamos, nos dan su departamento. Uh. Hecho. No. Monica. ¿Cuál era el apodo de Mónica cuando era gorda y jugaba hockey? Bodoquita. Correcto. Rachel decía que su película favorita era... Relaciones peligrosas. Correcto. Su película favorita ahora es... Sábado con Barney. Correcto. Moni ordena sus toallas en categorías. ¿Cuántas categorías tiene? Las de diario. De fiesta. De lujo. Faciales. Uh, Dos segundos. Son once. Son once. Es increíble. Uh -huh. Once. Es correcto. ¡Sí! ¿A qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? A los 14. No, a los 19. Gracias, viejo. En la infancia, un amigo imaginario. Su nombre era. Morris. Correcto. Su profesión era. Vea, para qué no es pasión? Correcto. <risa> Chandler, ¿en qué trabaja? Hot. <risa> Diez segundos, si no lo contestan, entonces. Tira... Now, let's break down the full clip line by line and find out who wins the apartment. Si ganamos nosotras, ellos se deshacen del gallo. Si ganamos nosotras. Ellos se deshacen del gallo. Si ganamos, here means if we win. In Spanish, si means if when it's being used to express condition. Ganamos comes from the verb ganar, which means to win. It's conjugated in the second person plural, nosotras, since it refers to Monica and Rachel. In Spanish, you can use a verb in the present tense like ganamos, to refer to a future event if there's a condition or uncertainty. For example, Si llueve, nos quedamos en casa. This sentence structure starting with si can not only be used to express uncertainty, but it is also commonly used in casual conversations where people negotiate or make deals, like in this scene. Se deshacen del here means they get rid of the. Se is a pronoun referring to them in this case and deshacen is a third-person form of the verb deshacer, which means literally to undo or to unravel. When deshacer is followed by de, it takes on the meaning of to get rid of. For example, hay que deshacerse de las pruebas. Deshacen is how deshacer is conjugated to talk about something that is uncertain, in this case, if the boys will get rid of the rooster or not. Monica is saying their conditions for the bet is the boys getting rid of the rooster that keeps waking them up every morning. Si ganamos nosotras, ellos se deshacen del gallo. Ay, qué interesante. Ay, qué interesante. Qué interesante here means how interesting. Qué means how when it's either in a direct or indirect question or in an exclamation. And remember that qué in an exclamation always has an accent. Qué interesante is a common phrase you can use in Spanish conversations to show that you are engaged and interested in what's being discussed. It can also be used sarcastically if you want to imply that something is not really that interesting. For example, Te puedes chupar el codo. Qué interesante. Rachel wants to get rid of the rooster in order to get her beauty sleep, so she's being completely earnest when saying Qué interesante. Ay, qué interesante. <laughs> si ganan, Regalamos al pollo. ¡Ah! Si ganan, regalamos al pollo. Regalamos al here means give away the. Regalamos comes from the verb regalar, which means to give as a gift or to give away. Regalamos is conjugated in the first person plural nosotros, since it refers to Chandler and Joey. Al is a contraction of a and el. In Spanish, we use this contraction every time the preposition a, literally to, would be followed by the article el, literally the. As you can see, this line is a parallel to Monica's from before. 
Si ganamos nosotras, ellos se deshacen del pollo. Because they are both expressing the conditions of the bet. In the guy's case, they are willing to get rid of the rooster on one condition. Si ganan, regalamos al pollo. Ah. ah. Pero si ganamos, nos dan su departamento. Uh. <laughs> Hecho. No. Pero si ganamos, nos dan su departamento. Oh. Hecho. No, Mónica. Nos dan su departamento. Here means you give us your apartment. As you can see, we're still following the basic structure of setting the conditions for the bet. Nos refers to the pronoun us, while dan is a form of the verb dar, which means to give. Dan is the second person plural, since it refers to ustedes, in this case, Monica and Rachel. Su is a pronoun to refer to other people's belongings, and it means your, while departamento means apartment. Be careful, because departamento means apartment in some Latin American countries, like Mexico, for example, while in Spain, departamento means department. In Spain, when we want to say apartment, we simply say apartamento. So, as always, be mindful of where you are when using certain words. Hecho here means done or deal. Hecho comes from the verb hacer, which means to do. Saying hecho is a colloquial way to agree on something, especially a bet or an agreement. Hecho can also be a way of ticking things off a list. For example, has llamado a Monica? Hecho. Here, Monica is agreeing to the deal without even considering her roommate's opinion. Poor Rachel. But yeah. Eto can have several different meanings depending on how it's being used and in what context. The easiest way to understand when and where to use a certain word is to hear it spoken by a native. So let's look at another example. If we click on eso on these interactive subtitles, we'll see that in this context, the eso also means done, despite being used a bit differently. And if we watch this other clip, Eso es debatible. Hay dos escuelas de pensamiento. Hecho. Los osos comen betabeles. We can see that the word hecho here means something completely different, as well as see how it's used in even more contexts. Pero actualmente ya es cosa del pasado. Es todo un hecho. If you're wondering what this handy dandy tool is, it's Fluent You, an app for learning Spanish with authentic videos, including movie scenes, clips from TV shows, TED Talks, and music videos. FluentU has thousands of videos, all of which have subtitles written by language experts, so you always see the correct definitions for words and expressions in that specific context, including personalized quizzes and speaking questions to make sure you remember everything you learn. Try it now for free. Just sign up for a two-week trial using the link in the description below. Plus, FluentU is currently having a sale, so it's the perfect time to check it out. Pero si ganamos... Nos dan su departamento. Uh. <laughs> Hecho. No. Monica. ¿Cuál era el apodo de Mónica cuando era gorda y jugaba hockey? Bodoquita. Correcto. ¿Cuál era el apodo de Mónica cuando era gorda y jugaba hockey? Modoquita. Correcto. Apodo here means nickname. Apodo is a noun from which stems the verb apodar which means to give a nickname to someone or something. Other Spanish words that mean the same as apodo are pseudónimo, alias, or mote. Pseudónimo refers to people who, for professional reasons, go by a different name, like authors, for example. Alias is more like a code name, like Eagle One, while mote has the exact connotations as apodo, but maybe a bit more informal. Fun fact, we love nicknames in Spanish-speaking countries, and almost everyone has got one, if not more. Modoquita here means little meager. Modoquita is a made-up word based on the term modico, meaning meager, and a usual nickname girls named Monica get, which is Moniquita. ¿Cuál era el apodo de Monica cuando era gorda y jugaba hockey? Modoquita, correcto. Rachel decía que su película favorita era... Relaciones peligrosas. Correcto. Rachel decía que su película favorita era Relaciones peligrosas. Correcto. Decía que 
Here means says that. Decía is a past tense of the verb decir, which means to say. Decía is in the third person plural ella, referring to Rachel. Que means that in this sentence. However, in some English sentences, you can omit the that, like in this one. Rachel piensa que van a ganar. Relaciones peligrosas here means dangerous liaison, referring to the famous movie by that name. Relaciones means liaisons, while peligrosas means dangerous. Keep in mind that movie titles can sometimes be translated differently in various countries, like with this movie, which was translated as Las Amistades Peligrosas, Dangerous Friendships, in Spain. So, it's always good to double-check the local title when discussing films with Spanish speakers, or else no one will know what you're talking about. Rachel decía que su película favorita era... Relaciones Peligrosas. Correcto. Su película favorita ahora es... Sábado con Barney. Correcto. Su película favorita ahora es... Sábado con Barney. Correcto. Ahora es... Here means now is. Ahora means now, while es is a form of the verb ser, which means to be. Ross is referring to Rachel's favorite movie changing. Sábado con Barney. He refers to Weekend at Bernie's. Movie titles are not usually translated literally, and as we've seen before, they change from country to country. Sábado means Saturday, while con means with. So, the Spanish title, Sábado con Bernie, translates to Saturday with Bernie. Let's check out how this title was translated in different Spanish-speaking countries. This movie was called Fin de Semana de Locura in Argentina. Este muerto está muy vivo, in Spain, and fin de semana con el muerto, in Peru. Which one is your favorite? The joke in this line is that while Rachel chose a pretentious film at first, they all know she likes basic comedies as much as anyone else. Rachel decía que su película favorita era... Relaciones peligrosas. Correcto. Su película favorita ahora es... Sábado con Barney. Correcto. <laughs> Moni ordena sus toallas en categorías. ¿Cuántas categorías tiene? Moni ordena sus toallas en categorías. ¿Cuántas categorías tiene? Ordena here means organizes. Ordena comes from the verb ordenar, which means to tidy or to organize. Ordenar can also mean to order when talking about ordering food, ordenar comida, or giving an order, dar una orden. Ordena is in the third person singular, ella, referring to Monica. Another verb for organize is organizar. However, using the verb ordenar instead adds a more personal touch, as it implies a deeper level of tidiness and care. And we all know Monica is a bit of a maniac when it comes to cleaning. Cuantas here means how many. When used outside of a question, cuantas tiene can be used to imply amazement or wonder. For example, ¿Cuántas faldas tienes? Here, ¿Cuántas refers to the categories of towels that Monica has, which, spoilers, is more than you would think. Vamos a ordenar todo el vocabulario en un PDF gratis para ustedes. Have you checked out our free PDF? It gives you easy access to all of the vocabulary that we have learned today, so you can study it whenever. Get it by clicking on the link in the description below. Moni ordena sus toallas en categorías. ¿Cuántas categorías tiene? Las de diario, de fiesta, de lujo, uh, faciales, uh, dos segundos. ¡Son once! Las de diario, de fiesta, de lujo, faciales, dos segundos, son once. De diario, here means everyday use. Diario means daily or every day when used as an adjective or an adverb. Be careful, because when diario is used without de, as a noun, it means journal or diary. In this case, de is used to specify the type of towel. For example, toallas de fiesta. In Spanish, de is used to show possession or connection, like of or for in English. So, de fiesta literally translates to for parties. Here, all the de lujo, de diario, refer to the different uses the towels have depending on their category. Las de diario, de fiesta, de lujo, uh, faciales, uh, dos segundos. Son once. Uh, uh, son once, es increíble, uh -huh. once, es correcto. Uh -huh. ¿Sí? <risa> ¿A qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? 
¿A qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? ¿A qué edad? Here means at what age. A means at. ¿Qué means what, since it's in a question? And edad means age. Another way of asking what age someone was when they did something would be ¿Con cuántos años hiciste eso? Con cuántos años literally translates to with how many years. Another expression you could use is ¿Cuántos años tenías cuando te divorciaste? ¿Cuántos años tenías literally translates to how many years did you have? All three expressions are commonly used, so pick whichever one you like best. Por primera vez here means for the first time. Por means for, primera means first, and vez means time. Primera is in the feminine form of primero, and it's used here because it refers to vez, which is a feminine noun in Spanish. If you were referring to a masculine noun, you would say primero or primer. For example, el primer estudiante en llegar. By saying, ¿a qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? Ross is indirectly making fun of his friend Chandler by asking how old he was when he got to second base. ¿A qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? A los 14. No, a los 19. Gracias, viejo. A los 14. No, a los 19. Gracias, viejo. A los here means at. A means at, while los is referring to the onset años, a los 14 años. In Spanish, you use neutral pronouns much more than in English. For example, voy al trabajo. In English, you don't say the work, but in Spanish, a noun is almost always preceded by a neutral pronoun like el or los. Here, Rachel doesn't seem to know much about Chandler's teenage years. Gracias, viejo. Viejo here means dude. Viejo literally means old when used as an adjective or old person when used as a noun. However, in some Latin American countries, it's used to say dude or buddy. Be careful when using viejo because while calling someone viejo can be a term of endearment amongst friends, it might come off as disrespectful with strangers or in a formal setting. Since Ross and Chandler are good friends and young, Viejo is clearly a term of endearment when used between them. A los 14. No, a los 19. Gracias, viejo. <laughs> Joey tenía en la infancia un amigo imaginario. Su nombre era... Joey tenía en la infancia un amigo imaginario. Su nombre era... Tenía en la infancia... Here means had when he was little. Tenía is a past form of the verb tener, which means to have. En means en and la infancia means childhood or infancy. So, while tenía en la infancia literally means had in childhood, a more natural translation is had when he was little. Other ways to express this in Spanish might be Joey de pequeño tenía muchos juguetes. De pequeño tenía literally means as a young boy he had. Another expression is Joey tenía su propio cuarto cuando era pequeño. Cuando era pequeño literally means when he was little. Spanish has a lot of different ways to say the same thing. So pick your favorite form of saying when he was little and let us know what it is down in the comments. Yo tenía en la infancia un amigo imaginario. Su nombre era... Maurice. Correcto. Su profesión era... Maurice. Correcto. Su profesión era... Su profesión era... Here means his profession was. Su is a possessive pronoun which here means... His. Su here refers to his, but it can also refer to hers or its. For example, Rachel es su mejor amiga. Su can also translate to your when referring to usted or their when referring to ellos. Profesión means profession. Era comes from the verb ser, which means to be. Era can also be used as a noun, in which case it translates to era or age. As in, la era de hielo. Here, Ross is asking the girls what Joey's imaginary friend did for a living. Es. Correcto. Su profesión era... Era vaquero espacial. Correcto. Era vaquero espacial. Correcto. Era vaquero espacial. Here means he was a space cowboy. Era means was, like we said before. Era is in the third person singular, el, referring to Maurice. 
Joey's imaginary friend. Vaquero can mean cowboy, jeans, or denim. As they're referring to a profession here, the meaning is clearly cowboy. The word vaquero is derived from vaca, cow. It's used to describe someone who works with cattle. The female version of vaquero is vaquera. Espacial refers to something that has to do with space. You might be wondering why Rachel doesn't say era un vaquero espacial. That's because in Spanish, you don't need to add un or una, a, when talking about professions. For example, era cocinera. Joey's head has always been filled with wonderful nonsense, so it makes sense his imaginary friend would have such an impossible job. Correcto. <laughs> Chandler, ¿en qué trabaja? <laughs> Chandler, ¿en qué trabaja? ¿En qué trabaja? Here means what is his job. En means en, que means what, and trabaja comes from the verb trabajar, which means to work. Trabaja is in the third person singular, el, referring to Chandler. So, en que trabaja literally means in what does he work. The Spanish expression en que trabaja is closer to the English what's his field of work. Since in Spanish, you typically don't ask cuál es su trabajo unless inquiring about the specific tasks he performs at his job. This question determines who wins the bet and therefore the apartment. Chandler, ¿en qué trabaja? Diez segundos, si no lo contestan, entonces... Diez segundos. Si no lo contestan, entonces pierden. Si no lo contestan, entonces pierden. Here means if you don't answer, then you lose. This sentence follows the same structure as the first two sentences of this clip where they use the conditional to set up the terms of the bet. Si means if, no means no, contestan comes from the verb contestar, which means to answer. Contestan is in the second person plural ustedes, referring to Rachel and Monica. Entonces here means then. It can be used as a way to indicate what happened after, for example, Vi la señal y entonces frené. And entonces can also be used to refer to the past. For example, por aquel entonces yo era más joven. It's often used to indicate certain time frames, like para entonces, desde entonces, or hasta entonces. In this line, Ross is warning the girls that if they don't answer now, then they lose. Pierden comes from the verb perder, which means to lose. Si no lo contestan, entonces pierden literally means if you don't answer it, then you lose, which is a pretty accurate translation. With only 10 seconds to go, will Rachel and Monica remember what their best friend does for a living or will they lose the apartment? 10 segundos, si no lo contestan, entonces pierden. No, tiene que ver con números y cuentas. Entonces es número, número leco. Tiene que ver con números y cuentas. Entonces es número E numerólico. Tiene que ver con. Here means it has to do with. Tiene comes from the verb tener, which means to have. Que in this context means to. Ver means see. And con means with. So, tiene que ver con números literally translates to it has to see with. However, tener que ver con is a fixed expression that always means it has to do with something. Another way to express this would be Es algo relacionado con números. Monica has a general idea of what Chandler does, but Rachel is just spouting nonsense. Tiene que ver con números y cuentas. Entonces es número, número leco. No existe esa palabra. No existe esa palabra. Ya sé que. No existe esa palabra. Here means that word doesn't exist. No means doesn't. Existe comes from the verb existir, which means to exist. Esa means that and palabra means word. This sentence is a perfect example of the difference in word order between Spanish and English. Spanish is very flexible. We start the sentence with the verb or with the noun. Esa palabra no existe. It depends on what you want to put the emphasis on. However, 
English word order is more strict. Monica and Rachel now have to give up their beautiful apartment all because they didn't know what their best friend Chandler does for a living. Si ganamos nosotras, ellos se deshacen del gallo. ¡Ay, qué interesante! Si ganan, regalamos el pollo. ¡Ah! ah, pero si ganamos, nos dan su departamento. Uh. ¡Hecho! ¡No! ¡Mónica! ¿Cuál era el apodo de Mónica cuando era gorda y jugaba hockey? ¡Bodoquita! ¡Correcto! Rachel decía que su película favorita era... Relaciones peligrosas. Correcto. Su película favorita ahora es... Sábado con Barney. Correcto. Moni ordena sus toallas en categorías. ¿Cuántas categorías tiene? Las de diario. De fiesta. De lujo. ¿Faciales? Uh, ¿Dos segundos? ¡Son once! Son once. Es increíble. Uh -huh. ¡Once! ¡Es correcto! ¡Sí! ¿A qué edad Chandler tocó el pecho de una chica por primera vez? A los 14. No, a los 19. Gracias, viejo. Yo tenía en la infancia un amigo imaginario. Su nombre era... ¡Morris! Correcto. ¿Su profesión era...? ¡Mira, para que no es pasión! ¡Correcto! <risa> Chandler, ¿en qué trabaja? Diez segundos, si no lo contestan, entonces pierden. No, tiene que ver con números y cuentas. Entonces es número... numerólico. ¡No existe esa palabra! In this next video, Rachel appears at a coffee shop wearing her wedding dress and looking for Monica. So go watch that Friends episode to find out why Rachel ran away as you see more examples of great conversational Spanish.